French insulation paint on the windings. Uh, I'll, I'll unwrap this because that's just wrapping up that stuff, but uh, I've got my extended uh, welded shape and our uh, seven and a half inches with one and a half inches of uh, bearing support. Anyway, that's it for the rotor. Brought back from the dead. It's uh, probably going to be good for Years. Okay, rotor's uh, pretty much done. Here's the shaft. Uh, I've got inch and a quarter to seven. There's the weld. Yeah, I had a couple little voids, but uh, it's perfectly, uh, perfectly acceptable. Uh, this end is turned to uh, one inch, and that'll be one of those slide-on pulley, uh, pulley blocks that'll support the end of that shaft because there's going to be Roughly, there's going to be a four-step pulley in, in this location. What I'm working on next is, is this is the oil seal, and it's pretty knackered. And that goes on and seals the oil in this bearing location. Um, so I'm going to fix that, and obviously you can see it's, it's too big. Probably would have had uh, felt uh, and snapping into there, so I'll probably make that out of leather. Leather's a good oil seal. And so that's a press fit. You can see See, I gotta press that in. So I'm not gonna press it in. But what it does is the it, it, it keep, lets the shaft come out and as the oil circulates it dumps out and recirculates into the pump and a little ring draws that up and lubricates that bearing. So I don't want any anything getting into that now I'll show you where that sits on the motor so there it is the motor shaft coming out and so now I've just got it only a few thou bigger just enough just enough to keep the corruption out way better and uh, hey very pretty, very, very pretty. Thank you. Hey, okay, uh, Jack, what you doing there, bud? Well, I'm trying to fix this end belt. You see these little pieces of, uh, come on in here, Nick. See these little pieces of broken cast iron, they've smashed out of there. And inside that's hollow, and there was a little cap that went over the cap, and that keeps the, uh, the oil in there. So what I'm gonna do is, there's where it broke. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, bore that to a nice press fit and do a a new one of these. So I'm holding this on a just on a wood chuck, and I'm hoping not to fuck shit up. But I'll get it to the point where I can just pop it out, and then I'll I'll clean up the shoulder and press fit a piece of. of uh, Bearing bronze ring with a beautiful little logo. Anyway, wish me luck. Okay, so uh, here's a little, uh, here's how I do vintage machinery tags, especially these ones which are really, really thin. But I actually don't want to make them perfect. What I want to do is make them legible, but also maintain some of the patina on this. And I've already started and I've got one, I, I, I do the border and let me show you how I do it. I start by washing. This, this tag was actually painted and washed with extremely hot water and lightly washed until the, um, well, until the paint came off. Now what I want to do is brighten up the letters and I've started, but I want to keep all of the patina in the background. This is a very hot low relief pattern so let me show you how I do it um, you just be very ginger and that's it watch now all I do is I use a bit of tape to keep me off there then I'm going to use scotch bright now a lot of the times these edges are knackered and so you need something soft to get into all of those imperfections now I'll tape off areas around here and then come back with an antiquer, which can touch up any bright spots. 
let me know in the last video if you think it's restored half decent. It was unlegible before and as I said painted over and I'm trying to maintain some of the historic patina which is kind of cool within itself. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll do progressions as it goes along and please let me know what you think. So you see by masking it off you don't try to rub that out. Now when you got to just do little highlight letters just put the tape right over top of it and actually burn through the tape and what will happen is you'll see that it'll just highlight the letters and you'll be able to get those very bright you see without disturbing the patina okay little tricks of the trade I'm gonna be out of business after showing you guys this stuff but hey hate to see people struggling thanks for watching I'll show you it on the machine last take and you tell me if it was worth the trouble now you want to touch the back up that I don't know what that is you can buy it but see if you got little rub throughs like for instance uh, look at that little rub through right there so let's just let's just fix that background again you see see how nice that does okay just a little artist brush see it's gonna put the tinta in there when you watch after I'm done this I will wax it okay and uh, that should be that should be it and it should look well not new but pretty darn good good afternoon guys uh, just tidying up the uh, leads coming off the motor so it's a four lead motor 120 240 and uh, depending on the configurations of the wire okay so what I decided to do is bury the connection into the pecker head here uh, with shrink wrap this is all cloth wire and then extend uh, extend the leads out uh, to uh, uh, the uh, disconnect and uh, which I'm gonna try to install uh, it's still a, a dual voltage motor now uh, it's number eight wire the leads because it's 52 amps at 110 and thanks to uh, somebody for recommending this sheathing as an insulator it's fiberglass anyway I'll bring those 